the MAGA Republican House of Representatives will demonstrate once again this week its abject unfitness to do the people's business. This is a group of 222 people picked, elected from all over the country and judged collectively against any other grouping of 222 Americans. These people are unparalleled for their incompetence, their weirdness, idiocy, and imbecility. The idea that somebody, anybody, any adult would vote to elect Jim Jordan to be second in line in presidential succession, a constitutional officer, Speaker of the House, is beyond words, truly. He is unfit, juvenile, petulant, and utterly incapable of functioning at the highest levels of the American government in times of crisis. The Republican majority has been off the rails for a long time. But even then, it was able to maintain, even if it was just the thinnest veneer of functionality. But now, at this moment, the House of Representatives is utterly shut, paralyzed, broken, at a time of genuine global crisis. The House of Representatives cannot pass appropriations bills, which means the United States of America cannot arm the Ukrainian defense forces. That means they will be starved, choked, and ultimately overrun by Russian aggression when they run out of the munitions they need to fight. It is the broken Republican House that is wrecking America's capacity to function in this moment of crisis as the world's arsenal of democracy. The House of Representatives cannot pass appropriations bills to support Israel in a time of existential threat for the Jewish state. Why? Because of the dysfunction and disordered personalities of the people who in their accumulation have arrived together with an R next to their names as members of Congress. It is a political party ruled by a minority faction that bullies, threatens, cajoles, intimidates, and rolls over its cowardly and principalist colleagues time and time again. Do you want to know how sick and broken American government is in the Republican House of Representatives? Look no further than this outrageous email from their leader, Sean Hannity. This email is being sent to members of Congress. It's like a note from a mob boss reminding everybody to pay the vig or else. Here we go from a man who along with Laura Ingram and along with Tucker Carlson and along with his dishonest network, poisoned faith and belief in American democracy. And now the real leadership of the Republican party is asserting itself. The cable news hosts who live fantastical lives of privilege and wealth. Sean Hannity makes tens and tens of millions of dollars a year lying to you and to all of the American people. And he's not content with that. Sean Hannity has become a principal advisor to President Trump, to the MAGA movement. He is the club that will be used to beat any recalcitrant Republican senseless for daring to defy the most extreme elements of the Republican Party. Let's read the email. Hello, Stephanie from The Hannity Show with Fox News. Sources tell Hannity that Rep X 
is not supporting Jim Jordan for speaker. Can you please let me know if this is accurate? And if true, Hannity would like to know why during a war breaking out between Israel and Hamas, with the war in Ukraine, with the wide open borders, with a budget that's unfinished, why would Rep X be against Rep Jim Jordan for speaker? Please let us know when Rep X plans on opening the people's house so work can be done. Lastly, are there any conditions Rep X will choose to work with Democrats on the process of electing a new speaker? The deadline for comment is 11 a.m. tomorrow, 1016. Thank you. Sean Hannity doesn't want Republicans to work with Democrats. Here's something a Republican elected official should say to Sean Hannity. Go away. You're a TV host. Who cares? That our elected officials, any of them, are cowed by this man is extraordinary. This man gave moral cover to the seditionist criminals who sought to burn down the Capitol who sought to destroy the American Constitution. And now he laments the closure of the people's house. How nice. What a sad moment. What a moment that marks the decay of our democracy, of the functionality of the most important concept that there's ever been that government of the people, by the people, for the people, must endure. What this moment does is test whether that proposition will, because these people, the Republican Congress, aren't capable of running a coffee stand, much less the US government. Each one of them, could have their faces carved into a mountain of unfitness. The problem in this moment is we're all their hostages.